Okay, so the motivation that we have was very clear, but the approach that we presented in in in, um, in our research is what we call the foundational approach because we take logical formalization and we try to reproduce uh, the logical steps that we do in proofs, the logical steps that we have in logical systems into an artificial neural network. The motivation here is to represent um, logical inference in artificial neural network, uh, artificial neural networks. And very, let's say in the late 90s, people realized that for certain kinds of artificial neural networks, uh, for instance, if you take um, artificial neural networks that uh, use uh, semilinear activation functions, feed forward or semilinear activation, active, activation functions, it's possible to show that uh, prologue problems, propositional prologue programs can be computed using this kind of neural network, okay? So since we, we were able to show, uh, Arthur Garces and Gerson Javrusha were able to show in the late 90s that, okay, propositional reasoning could be represented by certain forms of neural networks. Let's try and represent uh, richer uh, artificial neural networks using art the richer artificial neural networks represent other forms of reasoning, say temporal reasoning, say, model logic, say probabilistic reasoning. So the question was posed, can we go beyond probabilistic, beyond, sorry, propositional logic in artificial neural networks? And there was a paper by John McCarthy in the, in the late eighties who questioned uh, some of the work that was going on in the field. And according to John McCarthy, perhaps there was a limit to artificial neural networks. They could only represent simple propositions. They could not represent relations. And since then, there has, there has been a lot of work along um, other directions to, to show exactly that neural networks were more powerful than John McCarthy, McCarthy thought. And our approach to show that, uh, uh, sorry, I'm gonna jump to the, to the picture here. Our approach was to consider that uh, neural networks could be seen as possible worlds. When you think in terms of model logic, when you think in terms of uh, possible states in computer science, when you think in terms of distributed systems, of course, um, when agents interact in a distributed systems, you have to be able to represent the, the knowledge that agents have about not only their own possible world, but the other interactions that they have with other agents in multi-agent systems. And in computer science, uh, there was um, a lot of development of applying model logics, of applying other forms of, of logic to certain situations in multi-agent systems and certain test beds and certain benchmarks were uh, produced over the years. And what we did in our approach was, okay, let's see if uh, artificial neural networks are powerful enough to represent the logical reasoning that we have in multi-agent systems. Let's see if we can represent the way that agents interact in a limited uh, distributed systems. And let's see if it's possible to teach agents to reason about the knowledge that they are uh, absorbing in time and how in if knowledge can evolve in time and re be represented in artificial neural networks. So our inspiration was to use um, artificial neural networks as a representation of possible worlds and also to represent in ensembles, in combinations of neural networks, the knowledge of particular agents. And in, let's say, by multiplying or by combining different agents and the knowledge of different agents, we could represent certain puzzles, certain problems that one confronts in distributed systems, okay? So our inspiration was let's analyze and let's build artificial neural networks that could represent inference, logical inference. And then we found a way of representing uh, knowledge, uh, modal logic in artificial ne neural networks. And in a limited sense, in a, in a finite universe, we were able to impl implement some logical inference rules that are akin to logical inference rules that one uses in model logics or logical inference rules that one uses in temporal logic. And in order to do so, what we had to do was to develop algorithms that would uh, plug the logical inference rules into the artificial neural network models. And for certain different uh, logical systems. Of course, you develop different artificial neural networks. And the, and, the, and the key here is to be able to represent the logical procedure by connecting the networks, by connecting the networks, by connecting um, the way that agents interact with each other using inference rules. So for each agent, we, we are able to train the neural networks that represent their knowledge. And we are able to train the neural networks with the logical rules that will provide 
that will present the inference. In that way, what we are doing here is to train the networks to reason. So the approach is learn to reason in time, learn to reason as knowledge evolves. And the proper logic that we found that we use in our test beds were, were model logic because model logic can represent, depending on the abstraction that we choose, you can, represent, you can represent time, you can represent uncertainty, you can re represent the evolution of knowledge in time. That's a complex problem that uh, remains until these days, right? So um, in terms of, of approach, we use, you use a very simple language to represent uh, the knowledge. We use, for instance, um, a kind of a prolog extended with model operators that's called model logic programming. As you know, prolog has been extended to several operators over the years and to represent uh, knowledge as well. And we use inductive, um, uh, a form of prolog that is able to, to induce rules in terms of uh, representing modalities, in terms of representing time. And in the end of the day, what we're, we are capable to do was show that, okay, for certain fragments of model logics for certain fragments of temporal logics. There are artificial neural networks that can compute the result of certain programs that are represented in these networks. And this approach is also interesting because we're, we're capable of, okay, let's analyze if we can represent knowledge that evolves in time. For instance, in the Muddy Children puzzle where children or agents interact with each other and exchange information, as time passes, the agents absorb more and more knowledge and they evolve their capability of reason with upon new information, with information that they're gathering from the environment. And the key idea here was, okay, was to show that this um, approach was useful, not only for the typical test beds that one can find uh, in, in, sci in scientific papers, let's try and apply this approach to other domains. And in software engineering, one of the tools that is very well known these days in terms of software engineering research uh, are the tools for program verification and for model checking. And the insight here was, okay, let's use um, this approach. Let's combine, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 a neurosymbolic module with a model checker module to learn how to evolve program specifications. And let's see if this approach can be useful in software engineering to adapt requirement specifications or to, to improve the specifications that we have by using a combination of machine learning and model checking. So the insight here was to use um, a learning module. And from the examples that we provide the model checker, from the specifications that provide the model checker, the model checker, when you use a model checker, it provides counter examples. And these counter examples can be used to improve the initial specification. And we, by combining machine learning and model checking here, one can use uh, the power of the model checkers actually to be uh, an adaptive system. So the, the outputs that we have from the model checker are counter examples of the specification. And these counter examples can be used in the, in the learning procedure, can be used to train uh, the engine that we associate with a model checker. And um, more recently, we, see, we saw some work by, by David Harrell and collaborators at AAAI that show exactly a, a, an approach that was very similar to this one. They compose executable specifications with um, machine learning and search. And by using the counter examples that are produced by a model checker, you can you get better and better models of the system that you are trying to build, the system that you are trying uh, to represent. So we found applications as well in software engineering and in, in, in other domains.